gives me a lot. This was a very emotional, eye-opening experience for me. All right. So, guys, let's cut to the chase here. All right. So, what happened to me on <laughs> Friday the 13th? Actually, it started a few days before that. No, let's actually go back. It started a while ago. I was receiving signs. My body was trying to tell me after Christina and I, we talked about this. Hey, do you remember when we were going down to see Tyler when he graduated from basic training and I went down there and my feet were so swollen, my ankles, you know, I looked like Barney Rubble, you know, and you could push and you could see indentations and things like that. She goes, I should have had you go get checked out. Anyhow, even though I was going to the VA, still getting checked out, I think um, it wasn't thorough enough due to the levels of cholesterol and some other signs that my cardio cardiologist told me about. He says, hey, you know, for the cholesterol readings we're getting on you, so they're, they're in good levels, it was actually too high for me. All right, so let's go back. On the week of this incident, we're going to call it an incident, it was a massive cardiac arrest, a massive heart attack that I ignored the signs of this heart attack, all right? And I'm, the purpose of this video is to share with you my experience. This is totally my experience, right guys? Um, it's not an opinion. It's what exactly happened to me through an experience. All right, so numerous days prior to December 12th at 3 p.m., several days prior to that, I was getting indigestion, you know, acid reflux, lying in bed several days prior to that. I was like, man, I did not eat anything spicy, nothing fatty, anything like this. I was just getting this burping up in the middle of the night. And I'm like, wow, Cardi cardiologist said that was a sign. That was a sign right there that something was starting to go on. Something was happening. All right. So, all right. I'm going to try to follow notes there. Oh, there were some other things too. Like whenever I'd start talking, I would be talking to Christina and I would do exactly that right there. I would pause I would pause because I had cloudy thinking. I could not collect my thoughts. I wasn't able to think clearly. This had been going on for a while. All right, just another sign, guys. Just another sign. So if you're a male or female up around my age, I'm 57 years old and uh, 57 years young, right? Get checked out. If you're Look it up online. Don't you know? pay attention to me. Look it up online, the different signs of having a heart attack. Pay attention to those, all right? So I was getting the signs all the way up to that. I had always been very tired here recently. I could get up, go eat something, say breakfast. I'd go sit down on the couch and be winded and tired. Shortness of breath. Shortness of breath was another thing. I was just thinking, oh, I'm gaining weight, you know, and that's just part of getting old. That's what I was thinking. But the simple fact is, I was watching what I was eating. I was, you know, I, I don't drink pops. I don't drink sodas. I drink water, green tea, coffee here and now, okay? So I was experiencing shortness of breath, being tired for no reason. I would eat something and I was thinking, oh, maybe I'm a diabetic, you know, I'm eating something and I, I fall asleep. I could go show houses. And I would get out showing the house and go sit in the vehicle and like, man, I could, why am I so tired? I just walked around a property. It doesn't take that much energy to do that. All right. So that was another sign right there. Shortness of breath, being tired, overly tired for no reason at all. All right. So this is what happened on Thursday, the 12th is... At 3 p.m., I go to uh, drive over to pick up Alexis. I take her to from the southwest side in Decatur Township all the way up to the northwest side for her to go dance, right? So, and the traffic is horrendous, horrendous up around the northwest quadrant uh, going to her dance uh, studio. So, anyhow, I 
always hated. And I just thought I had some anxiety and some stress going on. When I was sitting there in the vehicle waiting for her, my chest, I felt, I felt like somebody had, was reaching in my chest and squeezing, literally guys, squeezing on my heart. Shortness of breath and my left arm just felt heavy, right? I know there's times, you know, I got carpal tunnel and because of the fat um, around the carpal tunnel will press down on the ligaments and my hands will go numb every once in a while because I'm holding them in a certain place while driving. So that's what I was thinking. But I just did not want to move my arm. I didn't want to lift up my arm, my left arm. So I had tightness in the chest, left arm was heavy, not numb, tingling. It was really heavy, just like this. I did not want to move it, all right? Other sign was it felt like somebody was choking me. I felt like somebody had me in a chokehold trying to choke me out. So I was trying to get my breath, trying to get my breath, trying to get my breath, right? And then my teeth started hurting. So I said, oh, you know, maybe it was just a flu that just came on really quick. And, you know, I got to get Alexis to dance. I got it. That's all I kept on thinking. I got to get her to dance. Drove her up to dance, came back and started hitting this. Started hitting this. I've been using this for several months. I've had people jump on here. It's like, oh, this is the reason why, you know, this incident, me having a massive heart attack happened. No, guys, it's not. It's not. I tripled down on this when I got back to the house. I tripled down on this. Then, while at the house, Bryce and I, we left. It's like, hey, let's go over shopping. You know, I just pulled off a bunch of Giving Tree gifts, tags from Front Porch Real Estate there at the office. And I said, hey, we got to go get this done. You know, now's a great time. Let's go over and let's go do that. So we went to Myers, walked around, no plug for them. Walked around and I'm feeling good. It's like, oh, because I was thinking of other things instead of what was going on in here. So I was ignoring the fact. Okay. Uh, get back to the house and I just wanted to sit down on the couch and watch TV. That I mean, I don't watch TV, but that's all I wanted to do. All right. So then Christina ended up picking up Alexis. She comes home and she's like, what are you doing? And I said, I'm sitting here looking at the TV. She goes, it's a blank screen. I said, well, it's not working and I'm trying to get it to work. She goes, you're not doing anything. You're just laying there. So she went upstairs and I sent her, man, I wish I could find that real quick. I sent her a text that says, here's my symptoms. Actually it was, here's my symptoms. I believe is what it said. Um, felt like Somebody squeezing my heart, left arm is heavy or numb, shortness of breath, feels like I'm choking, teeth are hurting. She came down and gave me two aspirins. Now, I think this is what helped keep me alive and along with the two aspirins that she gave me. And I told her all I wanted to do was go to sleep. All I wanted to do is go to sleep. That's it. I said, you know what? If I go to sleep, this will pass. I could not go to sleep that night. I was up in bed. I was fidgeting, tossing, turning. I was just like grabbing my hair, just doing all this stuff all night. I would get up. I'd go to the restroom, right? Still, this would not pass. I was like, man, I must be coming down with the flu or something like that, guys. No, I was just ignoring all the darn signs of everything that was going on. Here, I'm checking to make sure that there is any questions or anything. Wait, we've got some comments here. Let me check out what's going on. Need seeing everything, but a, wait, not seeing anything but a chair. Actually, I'm on here right now, so maybe you're froze up on that wait on that side, Kevin. Hey, well, um, yes, I'm glad to be here as well. Um, thank you, Wayne. I am glad uh, I'm here as well, and I have the ability to share that. Here, let me take this and lift it up. Maybe it is tilted down a little bit too far. Let me lift up just a tad. Okay. All right, we'll see how that looks. So, all right, let's get back. So, I could not sleep. I went downstairs. I was like, you know, I can't keep doing this laying there with Christina because she's going to wake up. She has to go to the hospital, right? Uh, to go work. So, I went downstairs and sat on the couch, and it was just like unbearable you know you always see those 
movies or somebody they're like, oh, they're having a heart attack, right? And they fall over. They're dead. Okay. I had everything. It started at 3 p.m. on the 12th, Thursday the 12th. That's when it started. I should have been in the hospital. Cardi cardiologist said you should have been in right then. You were having a massive heart attack at that time. I ignored it. Being a guy, being stubborn, I ignored it. I thought I could get past this. I could get past it. All right? So anyhow, sitting on the couch, same thing. Went in again, bam, hit this, tripled down. And um, I went upstairs. Actually, Christina, I think she came down. Then I went upstairs and went in the bathroom and violently retched. I don't want to get too graphic, guys. Five times, and it would not stop. Five times, it would not stop. Well, in case you guys are getting freaked out, I've got from retching so much prior to going in the hospital and during my procedural procedure, I've got a beet red eye. So don't let it freak you out, guys. That's the reason why I've got blood vessels that popped around my face. I got them on my neck. I've got, looks like I've been in a massive fight. Uh, this is where they're trying to stick me. Got some bruising on my hands there where they put the IV port. Um, more bruising there. Here, there's a port there, bruising here. But right here, I don't know if you guys can see that, right there. That's where they went in to be able to get to my heart through that vein. Okay, let's go back. All right, kind of get sidetracked right there. After I got done violently retching, I came downstairs and Christina says, you are white as a ghost. You need to go get checked out now. She said, do you want me to call you an ambulance? I said, no, I don't. It's not, I've never been in one and it just, it was not registering that I was having a heart attack and still having a heart attack. That was 14 hours later, this was still going on and it was not going away, not going away. All right. She goes, you want me to call your mom? I said, no, it'll take too long. No. Do you want me to take you? No, you're not ready. It's going to take too long. I will drive myself. I grabbed my keys. I walked out of the house. without telling Christina goodbye, Bryson, or Alexis goodbye. Anyhow, I drove to the hospital. Make sure you tell people goodbye. You just don't know. Tell them hi. Tell, it's a little emotional, guys. I'm sorry. So, anyhow, I'm going to get past this, guys. I left the house. I didn't tell anybody goodbye. I took my glimpse app and shared my location with Christina to let her know that I was progressively going towards the hospital. That if I stopped, she knew something was up. Okay. My app actually froze. And she called me right away. She goes, what are you doing? Where are you at? Why are you stopped? And I said, I'm at a stoplight. <laughs> actually, I was proceeding up to a stoplight. After looking back, I did not hit a single stoplight from the southwest side, jumped on the interstate, jumped off at Harding Street, made it to the VA hospital. I parked as close as I could, and while I was walking up to the emergency room, I said, God, please give me the strength to get in there. I do not want to be found laying in this parking lot. I walked in there. I checked in. They called my name. Luckily, nobody in there. This is about 5.45-ish. Nobody was in the VA hospital emergency room. Went in and I told her the symptoms. She goes, okay. Um, I said, I think I'm having a, a heart attack or I did have a heart attack. Um, I don't know what's going on. She goes, okay, lay down here. We're gonna put the EKG on you. She put the stuff on me and I said, what are you doing? She goes, I need to see if there's any changes. And she grabbed the report. She goes, get in this chair now. And that was the wheelchair. And I jokingly said, I'm like, come on, it's so big. You know, I'm not overweight. Can you get one that actually fits me? She goes, we don't have time. Get in this now. 
I got in it. They pushed me back. I told her, I said, I could walk this. She goes, no, you're having a massive heart attack. They put me on the table in the ER room and thank God there were some experienced people in there. I mean, I had two and three people on each side, you know, taking clothes off, shaving chests, you know, putting IVs in on each arm, getting the ports ready, doing all this. And the ER doctor come back and he says, do you have anybody that brought you here? Are they still here? I said, no, I drove myself. They all looked at me and said, you drove yourself? Yeah, I drove myself. They said, that is not safe. You could have died. Yeah, I was kind of stupid. I didn't want to wait on the ambulance. I didn't wait on, want to wait on having my mother come take me or, or, you know, have Christina take me because I knew she had to go to work, you know. All right. They said, can we call anybody? So they called Christina. And Christina just pulled up into Riley Hospital. She just pulled into Riley Hospital because she had to go to work. And she just took off right over to the VA hospital, calling in at the same time. And uh, <laughs> I remember she walked in and she punched me. She punched me. She goes, you should have listened to me. All right. So anyhow, while laying on the table, they gave me a couple baby aspirin right away and a nitroglycerin tablet. All right. And I said, what's going on here? They said, you're having a massive heart attack. We got to get a stent in you. I said, uh, oh, a cath in you. And I'm like, no, I don't want a cath to be able to urinate. I don't want those. She goes, no, we need to get a cath in your heart. So you don't have any heart damage. And so you don't have, we got to get the clots out. She started saying all that stuff as I'm walking back in tears. Tears are rolling out of my eyes as Christina is there. And I'm thinking, I didn't sign up for this. This should not be happening to me. I have always done my best to exercise and watch my weight and cholesterol and all that stuff and stay off drugs, stay off big pharma profit centers to keep from doing all this stuff that they wanted to give me before. I just, I tried to do my best by doing what I could, but age started getting to me. Age is a factor. And there is hereditary in my family with, uh, I had a grandfather that in his 40s, he started having heart attacks. He passed away in his 60s. So as I was roll, getting rolled back, I said, I'm, I was thinking to myself, I'm 57 years old. My goal was to make it past my father's age when he passed away at 60 years old. My grandfather passed away at 60. I said, that is young. I wanted to make it past that. I wanted to make it past those. So I'm laying there at the table and one of the surgeons, cardiac surgeons, I mean, it's like a cardiac emergency response team. Guys, it was just so real what was going on, on how they were this and that, the communication back and forth. And they were talking, talking about me and everything and I'm listening thinking this can't be happening it can't be happening so he brings out a piece of paper and he says here's some forms right here cardiologist talks about everything to go wrong you know liver di kidney dialysis and you know kidney failure liver failure you know infection that could cause death and all this and he goes, can you sign here? I said, do I have any choice? He goes, no, you don't. We need to work on you now. I signed off. I said, please don't crack me open. Don't do that. Don't open me up. And I said, get me out of this. I said, get me out of this. I got kids. I got two kids I did not say bye to. Get me out of this. So, I was probably on there an hour and a half, two hours, guys, on this table. I just remember getting very cold. 
I was not out. I was awake during this whole procedure. I was awake. And I remember there was a time when my arm was going like this, right? It was getting back and forth. And the doctor, the cardiologist was like, man, it, this is a tough one. Can't get it. And then all of a sudden, they all cheered. He got it, pulled it out, ran the die, everything worked. They all cheered. And I thought something good just happened because I feel pretty amazing. I had three blockages, two 100s and 180 blockage. Two 100s and 180. It was one of the 100s that was giving him a hard time. They tried a new tool. They tried a new device. Luckily, they had it. But that's what it was. He was able to bang onto it, grab it, suck it out, and take it with him. But it was at that point that I just, all the pressures went away. And I was like looking around. I'm like, am I still alive? Because I feel pretty darn good. And they said, Mr. Hunter, how do you feel? I said, I feel great. They said, you're done. We got him. We got him. And we're going to be breaking down and you're going up there to recovery. As I'm getting wheeled out, there's Christina and there is my mom and Bob. Tears started rolling down, down my eyes again. And I said, I'm sorry for doing this to you guys. So, got up in the ICU. They are on me. You know, how if you're up in ICU, they are on you about every single hour. Doing blood, checking blood pressure, doing temperatures, just constantly. And I'm thankful for that. VA, hospital, ICU team, cardiac team, the ER team, thank you. You did an amazing job. All right? So... <laughs> I asked them, I said, hey, when can I get out of here? And this is on Friday, Friday the 13th. You know, mind you, I was just in there uh, about 545 in the ER, being admitted, getting checked out. And uh, and I'm up there probably about 9 o'clock up there in ICU. And I said, hey, when, I, when can I get out of here? I got things to do. I know, and I knew in the back of my mind, I got a closing on Wednesday. You know, there's just some small things, some small details I want to get with my buyer, right? And go over to make sure that everything's going cool, right? And then I had another one that's uh, in inspection period. The inspection just came back and that was on the 12th. And we were supposed to talk on Friday to be able to go over that with her. And I you know, wasn't able to do that. So I had to make sure that these people... My clients were being taken care of. And that's all I kept thinking about. And then another thing came into my mind. It's like, oh crap, my brother is having a 50th birthday party, dinner celebration at OPA. And I've been looking forward to that because he made it to 50 on the 12th. December 12th was his birthday. I am so thankful I didn't die on his birthday. Boy, so thankful. So anyhow, I told them I, and they said, well, what do you think you can get out? And they said, I said, when do you think I could get out? And they said, 48 hours. And I'm like, no, I got a birthday to go to on Sunday night or Saturday night. Got a birthday to go to at 7 o'clock, 6.30, 7 o'clock. Need to be there. They said, you're not leaving this hospital. I was like, okay. You know, because I hate hospitals. I don't like sitting in there. So anyhow, there was one point Saturday morning after I, you know, I didn't even sleep Friday night. And I wanted to sleep so bad because I didn't sleep Thursday. So Friday, uh, Saturday morning, I was standing over. I was going around. I'm walking around, you know, checking everything out in the room. I'm getting it organized. I'm getting my clothes. I'm taking inventory. You know, I'm getting them folded. I'm putting them back over where you would put your clothes, like kind of a little dresser nightstand area. I'm putting everything over there, right? And um, I, I, Nurse Dan come walking in. He goes, Mr. Hunter, what are you doing? I said, I'm over here taking inventory. He goes, if you are trying to put your street clothes on and break out of here to be able to go to your brother's birthday dinner, he goes, I will put you in restraints. I will take all your clothes, put you in restraints. I wanted to go bad, but I knew that my health was more important. So anyhow, 
did everything that they, they wanted me to do. I even walked around on Saturday, did a lap there, being escorted, make sure I didn't fall or anything like that. Sunday, I did a couple laps. And every time I came back, a cardiologist was there. He's like, wow, that's amazing. Amazing. You just had a massive heart attack that was almost a widow maker. One of the cardiologists told me as well that if I would have went to sleep Thursday night, I would not have woke up. That was a, everything happened for a reason. Everything happened. I was, it was not, wasn't my time to go. I got things to do. I've got clients to help buy or sell a house. I got clients out there. I'm going to help them. I'm the one that's supposed to be here to help them. I'm going to help people that if, if they want to get started in their own business, you know, CBD. Those are my two main focuses. And I have a new appreciation for my family members, no matter if they're crazy or not. All right. Whoever they are, their little quirks, their idiosyncrasies, whatever they might be that we, it just frustrates us sometimes that we're around them. I am glad to see him. Somebody come, I mean, I had visitors coming up in my room. Rick Davies from Front Porch, my managing broker, came up in my room, paid me a visit. Family members come up and paid me a visit. That means a lot to me. That means a lot to me because I always wondered if anybody would show up at my funeral. I always wondered that. Why? I don't know, but I always wondered that. So guys, I'm going to jump right through here real quick. Um, see these comments? We got quite a few comments here. I really appreciate you guys taking the time. So here, the reason why I'm sharing you this and how emotional and this experience was for me is whether you're a male or a female, it doesn't matter. Whether you were young or old, it doesn't matter. If you are having the signs of cardiac arrest, Look them up. Talk to somebody. Go get checked out. I know the signs now. It's not going to happen again. I did not want to leave my kids behind. We've got Sean, Tyler, Alexis, Bryson. And I didn't want to leave my wife behind. There's a new appreciation there as well. There's a new appreciation with everything. Fixing my own breakfast driving my vehicle. Oh, by the way, I did drive home. They said, Mr. Hunter, you know, do you want to go down to a wheelchair? I said, no, I walked in this hospital. I'm going to walk out and I'm going to drive home. I said, my vehicle's sitting right out there. I'll drive home. They said, okay, you are, a, well, a model patient. You did exactly what you're supposed to. You didn't give us a hard time and you are recovering amazingly. But realize that you're going to be on some medicines. I've got medicines i got to be on. I'm baby aspirin every day. I've got a high cholesterol because they don't want any buildup around the stents. Because one doctor, one cardiologist, he actually put this to me pretty good. And he actually was very descriptive in telling about what a stent was like. So it was a stent that, you know, gets put in. And it, he says, very tacky like um, flypaper. And he goes, your blood will go through there and it will start wanting to stick to it. And there'll be a buildup. There'll be a buildup and it could create another clottage. And he goes, if you don't take your medicine within 24 hours, it will be blocked again. He got two stents. I got two stents. Three blockages, two stents. Um, I'm not proud about this. I'm not wanting to be in the stent club or the massive cardiac arrest club. Didn't want to be in there. I never thought this would happen to me. Never thought this would happen to me. So anyhow, um, got to be on those medications. I've got AM, i got PM. Very humbling that, you know, we had the pill, the, the weekly pill containers. And whenever you go into an older person's house and whenever I go show houses, you know that there's an older person in there or maybe somebody has some kind of health issues is because there's little pill containers out or their medications laying out. Okay, 
Um, same thing with me. Now I've got these medications in my cupboard. I've got these pill containers on my counter to remind me. And I've got Alexa telling me. Alexa's like, you know, Devin, it's time to take your medication. Devin, remember to take your medication. So I've got those going off twice a day. I've got a built-in caretaker, Christina. Um, that could be why she went to respiratory therapists to be able to have the patience to be able to take care of me. I mean, she's always been that kind of person. She's always taking care of the kids and now she's got to take care of me, you know, and I don't want to be that kind of burden. So anyhow, guys, this Facebook Live has went a long time and I thank every single one of you. I appreciate you and I'm very grateful for all the comments you know, on the post that I put out there, the get well quick, we're praying for you. Everything out there. I appreciate it. And whenever I was going through the comments, because sure is boring sitting in those rooms. When I was going through the comments, reading them, I was like, wow, this is this is awesome. I felt the love. I felt, you know, the, the good vibrations, the power, the, the prayers and everything was getting sent to me. So guys, you know, I just wanted to share this with you. I appreciate you. And uh, if there's anybody out there that could benefit from watching this, all right? So I just want to let you know here, if you, you probably watch this up to this point, and that's cool, but right on the, let me look at this. Um, it looks like the right-hand side of the Facebook post, there's going to be three horizontal buttons right there. I want you to click on that save this video, send it to somebody, share this video, have them come back and do a watch party. Maybe you do a watch party and watch this, all right? I want to help at least one person to keep from doing this again. Heart disease is preventable. I think with proper nutrition, that's one of the things I did. I am cutting out, I'm doing, cutting out all animal proteins. I know there's some even close family members, there's friends of mine that are like, you freaking crazy. Rick Days told me, he goes, would I have to cut out bacon? I said, man, it's full of sodium and it's processed. He goes, mm -hmm. uh, nah, not happening. So anyhow, I love bacon. I love burgers. I love steak. I love fish. I love, guess what? It's gone. All of that. Low sodium, healthy nutrition plan that I'll be doing. Because I want to be around to watch my kids grow up. I want to be around. I've got a niece that's going to be getting married soon. I want to be there. I want to be there. So, guys, let's change your nutrition plan. If not complete change like I am going to do, go to vegan. All right? I'm going to eliminate all the animal proteins, guys. Anything coming from an animal, I don't need it. All right? I am going to go into this mode so I can get this weight off. I started, I was 195 the other day as at the hospital at 202, came out of the hospital at 197. I just weighed in this morning at 189. I wanna get this weight off. All this fluid retention that I had, I'm gonna get it out of me. I'm gonna drop the weight. I'm gonna be back exercising soon even though they said I can't exercise for two weeks. Once I go into cardiac rehab, I will be art exercising again. I will be getting my health and my body back to where it should be. All right, guys. Starting to ramble. I appreciate you. I'm out of here. I'm going to end this. Please share this. If you know of anybody that needs this message, share it with them. Let's save a life. Let's help keep everybody around longer. We don't need to have these issues in here. We don't. So guys, I'm out of here. I appreciate you once again. Thanks for watching this. If you just stop stopping at the middle or the end, go back and watch all over again. All right? So this is my experience of having a massive heart attack that I ignored the signs. Three blockages, two 100s, 180. Now I have two stents, medications, and have to watch my sodium and watch my lifestyle as far as the bad stuff we put in our body. No more. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Love you. Peace out. We'll talk soon. Thanks for watching. I am excited to be here. Super excited. I'm honestly excited. I love it. Man.
super excited to be able to do this. Love you guys. I'm out. Bye.